Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 60. You know, we were just in the groove of having so much algebra fun, and now John has decided to throw us a geometry lesson. <sighs> Whatever. It's not hard. It just changes the vibe. Um, I'll be honest, I, generally speaking, I enjoy algebra more than geometry. Some geometry I really like. Um, and other of it just kind of annoys me with its tedium. So, this may not be my favorite lesson. This may not be your favorite lesson, but it's not hard. It's straightforward and easy. So let's dive in. We're gonna talk about two shapes that we haven't talked as much about, prisms and cylinders. Let's take a look at what they are and what they are not. Okay, and I'm gonna just refer to my book for a lot of this so that we don't have to spend a lot of time drawing pictures. If you've got your book, grab it and open it to page 242. If your book is close at hand, um, feel free to pause me and go grab it and then join us once you have your book open to that page. Okay, so we're talking about geometric solids. By solids, we mean three-dimensional objects. And here are a bunch of them. So we're just gonna talk about what makes them interesting or unique. Let's start at this end. This is a sphere, which is just fun to say. It's a very elf, you know, the movie Elf, you know how he just says weird words weirdly. It's a sphere, um, it's a ball, that's all it is, it's round, okay? A right circular cone is, I mean, if you know old-fashioned dunce hats, you know, back in the day when school was into cruelty, they would make kids who said something dumb wear a dunce hat, and it's a circle on the bottom, but then the sides are all smooth and it tapers up to a point. This is called a regular square, oh, it's right, because if you draw straight down from the center to the middle of the circle, that line will meet at a right angle. It's not crooked or wonky. When you see the word right, that means it's all perfectly aligned. It's not crooked or wonky. This is a regular square pyramid. What does that mean? It means there's a square on the bottom, and then there are triangles going up from each one of those four sides of the square. They're going up and meeting in the middle. That's different than a cone, which is rounded. A pyramid has flat sides. As you know, hello Egypt, um, a right circular cylinder is a soup can or an oatmeal box, if you will. Circle on the bottom. Circle on the top doesn't come to a point. Circle on the top and then straight sides that are smoothed, right? And then this is what we call a right triangular prism. It's a triangle on the bottom and a triangle on the top, and its sides come straight up. Students tend to get confused about prisms and pyramids. Pyramids, the sides come to a point. Prisms, the sides come to the same object at the top as they have on the bottom, all right? When I see the word prism, I always think of those little pieces of glass or plastic that will you know, catch light and make rainbows. They'll split the spectrum apart. Um, if you have any of those, I'm really into them. I have a bunch of them at my house. Some, I have some that are shaped as triangles. So that helps me remember that, oh yeah, a prism is, is the same, same, shape, same shape. I don't think I said that right. Same shape on the bottom as it is on the top and then flat sides connect it. You can have a rectangular prism as well, all right? But pyramids come to a point. Pyramids look literally like the ancient Egyptian pyramids, right? There's no mystery to that. Um, and then a prism does not come to a point. It's got the same shape, bottom and top. Um, cones and pyramids are quite similar because they both come to a point, okay? A sphere is kind of its own weird thing. But a cylinder and a prism, are two topics for today, are similar because they have the same shape on the bottom as they do on the top. One is straight sides, one is rounded. Okay, now let's look at what we don't have to deal with. Some prisms are crooked. See how that one tips? And we don't like those and we don't wanna deal with those, so we won't. We're only gonna deal with right prisms, okay? Same shape on the bottom, same shape on the top, straight sides going down, everything is neat and clean. Um, these sides 
that go around here, they're called lateral faces. Lateral is a word that means side. So they're the faces. And then the fold points, if you will, are called the lateral edge. They're like the creases where the sides bend. The height of a prism or a cylinder, the height of a three-dimensional object like this, a solid, is called the altitude. Height is typically reserved for two-dimensional objects. If it's a three-dimensional object, we call it the altitude instead of the height. Same difference, though. And then remember what this line in the middle is showing us is that, uh, no, it's not. Um, never mind. The bottom's called the base and the top is called the base, which is a little confusing, but they're the same, so it's fine. All right, so what we're gonna deal with is only right prisms. That word always used to sort of frighten me and annoy me, but now I know it just, it, take peace, right? It means, don't worry, everything's fine. Now, we can have prisms in a lot of different shapes. Here is a triangular prism, a rectangular, a trapezoidal, and a pentagonal. That word simply refers to the shape that's on the bottom and the top of the prism, okay? So that just gives you information about what that shape is. All right, a cylinder is kind of like a prism, only it's based on a circle instead of a straight-sided object. So once again, no tippy cylinders in our lives. We're not dealing with this at all. We're only gonna deal with right cylinders. Again, base and base. Cylinders will always have circles for bases. And then we have the lateral surface. We don't call it a face because um, the face refers to the idea that it's perfectly flat. This bends, right? So we call it the lateral surface. And um, axis, we don't usually talk about that. Again, we say altitude instead of height, but it's the same difference. We're only going to deal with right cylinders and right prisms. No freak children in our problems. Sorry. Okay, I think that's all I need to show you. I hope you could see. All right. Let's get into some actual computation, shall we? To find the volume of either of these, we use our standard volume measure. Remember that volume is always a three-dimensional measure. And so we take the area of the base, the bottom of our shape, whether it's a prism or a cylinder, and we multiply that, and I'm gonna use the familiar word, by the height. Now, we also know that that's sometimes called the altitude. So we can be on the lookout for one word or the other. I think it's much easier for students to just remember height. Altitude sounds like you're in a plane and it's all weird. Okay, this is our basic formula. So make sure you get that copied into the back of your, wherever you keep your formulas, the back of your book. Now I'm gonna show you the shorthand way we can write it. Volume equals the area of the base times the height. And for some reason I like to do the H as a lowercase h. All right, that formula is going to get us through all of these problems, and that's the good news. Example 60.1, there are only two examples. The area of a base of a right pentagonal prism is 28 centimeters squared. Okay, the area of the base of this thing is 28 centimeters. I'm gonna write that down and then I'll show you the picture. It's a pentagonal prism. The word prism tells us that it's got the same shape on the bottom as it does on the top and it's got straight sides. And I'm doing hand motions that you can't see. And then pentagonal tells us that the shape on either end is a pentagon, five sides, right? So there it is. And the length of a lateral edge, okay, that would be like the fold, is 10 centimeters. Okay, in order to do the volume, we need the height, right? But here's a little tippy trick. A lateral edge on a prism is equal to the height. Right, that makes sense. Um, 
Here's a square prism. It's a pack of post-it notes that I had sitting close by, right? So if this is our shape. I'm gonna orient it toward the camera. This is the base and this is the base. We call them both the base, right? And we want the height of it. We could measure it right along here. This is what we call the lateral edge. It's where the fold is, where the side folds. It's called the lateral edge, but it would also be the height, wouldn't it? Because it's the, it's the distance between the two bases. So same difference. And so we can write H equals, what did I say it was? 10 centimeters, same unit. Got holes in my way. So find the volume of the right pentagonal prism. Well, the volume equals the area of the base, which is 28, times the height, which is 10. So the volume of our right pentagonal prism is 280 centimeters. Volume is always in the third dimension, so we put a cube on it. We also multiply the squared times a plane, so that's another way we can remember, oh yeah, it's cubed. That is our answer. That's not that bad, right? Compared to some of those other ridiculous problems that we did, and the one that we're going to do that's a little bit wonkier, um, it could be worse. Okay, done. Next and last problem for this glorious lesson. Ready? Now we're going to talk about surface area. The Remember, lateral means the sides. We have a nice little formula for this too. Okay. We find the perimeter of the base, and then we multiply it by the height. And let me remind you of how that works. We're looking at this one in a pentagon, all right? So let me draw a pentagon as best I can. Pretend it's perfect. It's got five sides, right? That's the base. We're trying to find let me show you this picture, right? So here's our pentagonal base, and here are the sides that come straight up. There's another pentagon on top. That's how we know it's a prism. We're trying to find this shaded area. We don't need to know the base uh, at either end. We want the sides, right? So what we do is we get a pair of box cutters, and we cut off the top and the bottom, and we take that piece of cardboard that composed the signs, and we lay it out flat. It's a magical cardboard that automatically lays flat, which is a really nice thing about it. And we do know that there are fold marks in it, right? This is where the creases were, right? And we know that it used to fit around here. Again, pretend it's perfect, because mine's not perfect. This fit exactly around here, right? Now, in the picture, John tells us that the height equals 15, and each side of the pentagon equals eight units, okay? Like this, eight, 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 eight. Which means that if this cardboard would fold to go right around here, then it must also be eight, 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 eight. You see, it's kind of like building Ikea furniture. You have to visualize these two flat things coming together and taking 3D shape. P.S. You probably could guess this, but I love building Ikea furniture. Absolutely love it. Um, okay, so that's what they're talking about is that the perimeter of the base, which is eight plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight, will equal the bottom edge of the lateral sides, right? Because this, this, this is the surface area that we cut off, 
the top of that, right? So, this side of the lateral surface area is equal to the perimeter of the base, and this side is equal to the height. And those are the two components we need to find the lateral surface area. I hope that makes sense. If you can visualize the way these pieces of cardboard were cutting them and laying them flat and examining them from different angles, if you can follow me, if you can track that process, this is pretty straightforward. If you can't track that process, it makes it a lot harder. Okay, so now for our last step, This is the puffy cloud of knowledge bit that you needed to save. Um, now we're ready to do our calculation. For this problem, the lateral surface area equals the perimeter of the base. We just have to add all those together or multiply. Eight times five is 40. Times the height, and our height is 15. That equals 600, did that in my head, 400 plus 200. Um, and now we need a unit. I look back at the book, they're in meters, and it's lateral surface area, so that means it's a square, right? So this is always a two-dimensional calculation. Equals the lateral surface area, and that's the right answer. Yay! Prisms and cylinders. We really didn't talk very much about cylinders once we got past the beginning, did we? We talked mostly about prisms, and I'm just glancing at the problems all of the problems I see in the practice and the problem set for this lesson are based on prisms. So don't worry about the cylinders just yet. We will stay focused on the prisms. All right, there it is. Our little geometry lesson dropped down into the middle of algebra land. I hope it doesn't make your brain hurt too much. Um, maybe it even feels good. Maybe your brain likes a little geometry to mix things up. Um, I hope so. So that brings us to the end of our third week after the break. It's the end of week 16. I'm tracking this. This is for the full year uh, because we've worked hard. I think we need to keep track of how many years it's, and how many weeks it's been so that you can see how smart you're becoming. Yay, we're done. Thank you. Goodbye.